So, I did a poll on Instagram, and I asked you guys, would you be willing to watch, or would you guys want me to do some sort of military-style videos uh, every now and then, whether that be once a week or once every other week or something like that? Uh, so here is the first one right here. These military style videos are going to be a little bit different from what I'm used to posting here on this channel. I am TJ, your host of Fishing with Yak Pack, and I like to post fishing and, and exploring and kayaking and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so if you are interested in that, please feel free to check out some more videos. But with that being said, let's get started. A little bit of backstory before we move any further. Uh, I joined the Army in 2009. And I've been in since then, so we're we're coming up almost to the day on 11 years since I've been active duty in the Army. I've lived all over the world. I've trained all over the world, trained with tons and tons of different, uh, you know, foreign militaries and whatnot. Uh, I have a couple pairs of really cool foreign jump wings from when I was airborne at, uh, at Fort Bragg in the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, I've been to Iraq once. Uh, but anyways, that, that being a little bit of a uh, backstory, uh, a lot of people were asking, why don't you make videos like Lunkers, okay? So these videos were basically derived from Lunkers, okay? Now, understand though, uh, Lunkers and I, you know, if, you are, if you're watching and you have a military background, you completely understand, but if you don't, I'll kind of break it down as best I can for you. Uh, Lunkers and I have a virtually almost completely different uh, career path, basically. So to an extent. He was infantry slash sniper slash like special operations type support. You know, he was deploying with the uh, like SF guys or the Navy SEALs or uh, teams like that and so on and so forth. So he was doing real cool guy stuff is what we like to call uh, in the army. And uh, I have done some cool guy stuff in my, in my 11 years in the service. So what I'm going to do for you guys in these military type videos, you know, I don't want to call it military Monday, but you know, if you got a name, uh, drop it down in the comments or any for that matter any sort of question about military service uh, drop it down in the comments and uh, you guys know I love talking to you guys anyway so this video is going to be more so along the lines of why I joined the military these videos here are not going to be necessarily in chronological order I'm just gonna tell you guys stories about my military service now whether that be uh, I got a whole bunch of stories from Iraq. I've got a whole bunch of stories from when I trained with the Singapore uh, like Ranger Regiment over there in Singapore. Uh, jungle school. I was the very first class to go through jungle school when it reopened in 2014. Uh, it had been closed down for like I think 25 years or something like that. We were the first class to go through. Uh, training story, any any kind of stories that I can think of, and a lot of it can be fueled by you guys uh, dropping questions down below, and you know I can kind of take two or three minutes out of the whatever video it is and, and answer those questions here in these military videos. But okay, let's uh, let's get started. Where did I join the army from? Uh, originally, grew up in Georgia, born and raised in Georgia, so that's where I'm from. Uh, I joined the army out of a career center in Carrollton, Georgia, and why? Why did I choose the Army? Why did I join the Army? So throughout my younger days, uh, I was a heathen and I was a hell raiser, okay? It, I was on a path of destruction, going nowhere fast. I was hanging out with the wrong people. Uh, and th those are completely different stories for different days. Uh, I was very wild in my younger days. Uh, anyways, I woke up one morning after a night of... I'll let you use your imagination uh, of whatever. And I called my dad and I said, I said, Dad, I want to change my life. I was like, can you come pick me up? Here I am, uh, 18, almost 19 years old. Uh, had no job, no money. Uh, I had no nothing. And I just woke up one morning and decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to change my life. So anyways, I ended up uh, going down to Florida for about a week for a wedding on the way back up, the person I was riding with, I told him, I said, I'm going to join the military. And it, it's kind of a, a thought that I'd always had. You know, I've got, my family has military history somewhat. Nobody is, you know, spent 20 years, 25, 30 years in the military and retired. A lot of it was short service. Um, I think the only person that ever retired from it was my great uncle. And he actually ended up fighting in uh, World War II. He was with the Rangers and he was one of the guys to scale the Point de Hoc, which, I mean, that's, that's mind blowing. That's absolutely insane um but he ended up doing 20 years in retiring anyways uh, i get sidetracked really bad listen guys i'm gonna do my best to tell these stories as best i can i get sidetracked but anyways i told that person that i was with in the car i'm gonna join the military 
can you take me to the career center? Because originally I wanted to join the Marines. And, you know, nothing against the Marines. I've trained with a lot of Marines. I was deployed with a lot of Marines. I, I, I Nothing but love for Marines. But I'm glad I didn't. Uh, more opportunities were given to me uh, through the Army than would have been given to me through the Marines. And uh, I knocked on the Marines' door that morning. I got there, and nobody answered. Well, this guy comes out and uh, from the Army office. They were the only ones in the entire building. Career Center, if you guys don't know, it's where every branch of the military is in one building. Uh, so they almost fight for what, what's called a, a walk-in recruit. He come out, and he said, uh, are, you, are you thinking about joining the military? And I was like, yes, sir. He's like, well, come in here and talk to me. And I don't know if I could put enough emotion behind telling you guys uh when i stepped foot through that door uh i knew without a shadow of a doubt i didn't care about money i didn't care about where i went i didn't care about a, a job in the military i didn't care about any of that i just wanted to get away from the situation that i was in uh, and the people that i was surrounding myself with uh and the hanging out with i i needed to change my life and and to get away from those people so uh, without a shadow of a doubt, I knew for a fact I was going to join. So it was kind of a, uh, a somewhat lengthy process, but at the same time, not necessarily. So 2009, we were coming down off of the height of the Iraq war. So there wasn't necessarily a push to get people in the service. Now, obviously, recruiting is always going to have numbers they have to meet. But at that time, uh, if you weren't basically spotless clean, uh, it, it was a little more difficult to get in. So I had a few things back then. It was nothing crazy. It was, you know, uh, I don't know, fighting after a football game. Just little things like that here and there. That was uh, kind of on my record. But I uh, got waivers for all of those things. Finally uh, joined and shipped to basic training in January um, 2009. I started the process of joining in 2008, but uh, didn't get in until 2009. And it really was a an eye-opener. Um, I am a person that I'm not scared of change. I'm not scared of competition. I'm not scared of a challenge. I'll tackle whatever head on and uh, we'll get into that further, you know, challenges and, and competition and all that stuff throughout these, these military videos. I don't know what we're going to call these, but you guys drop me, like I said, drop me a name because I have no idea what we're going to call these, but it was an eye opener. It was a drastic change of what I was used to. I mean, you go from Joe Smo on the block doing whatever you want to do, and now your day to the minute is dictated by everything you do. Everything is, all the decisions are made for you. Uh, from the time you wake up, the second you wake up, until the second you go to sleep, every single decision virtually is made for you. So basic training. The first day I was in basic training, I will never forget when I pulled up on the bus and the drill sergeant steps on the bus and here you are, you know, you watch movies and you speculate, you know, what is he going to say? What is it going to be like? You know, well, he hops on the bus and it was the exact opposite of what we thought it was going to be. So the drill sergeant gets on the bus, he steps on the bus. He's looking at all of us. I think 63 of us on the bus and he's looking at us and he was, he says, get off my f***ing bus. My heart sank when he said that. I, I said, oh my God, what did I get myself into? So anyways, we're scrambling, we're grabbing whatever we brought with us. You know, I think it was like a little, uh, you know, gym bag type deal, a little duffel bag with some clothes and uh, stuff like that, some hygienic stuff in it. And uh, we're all scrambling to get off this bus. Of course, there's, you know, we're, we're people from all over the United States. So the military mentality and stuff like that is, is is the discipline and order is not there yet uh clearly not there yet because this is day zero so we get off this bus and as we're getting off there's probably 10 on each side maybe drill sergeants and uh i mean there's no room for you to walk off this bus if you're looking directly in the center of the screen the drill sergeant's faces like their noses would be like the tips of their noses would be like right here so they intentionally uh, they're already playing mind games. They're already playing mind games. The The goal in basic training is they want to break you all the way down and build you back up and mold you into a, a soldier, okay? Now, some people just can't hack it. I, I witnessed uh, quite a few people, I think five or six people, that just couldn't deal with it. And uh, they ended up getting the boot and they sent them home. But that was a very, very long night. We got off those buses at probably, I want to say, between 6 and 7 p.m., 
and we did not go to sleep that night until probably five that following morning, uh, just because it's day zero and they're gonna they're gonna break you of everything you think you know, and um, they're just you're gonna absolutely destroy you. Uh, but all in good fun, I guess not good fun. Probably not the best words to use. Uh, the, there's a method behind the madness. That's what that's what we'll call it. Method behind the madness. So basic training starts, and uh, you go through phases. You have red phase, uh, white phase, and blue phase. Red phase is where they basically, like I said, they'll break you all the way down. They'll start building you up, and you'll start learning that good order and, and military discipline. Okay, that's your basic everything. Everything basic about the military you can think. They're gonna they're gonna teach you all that stuff. Uh, the hard way, of course. They're gonna teach you the hard way. Uh, white phase is where you begin uh, marksmanship training, and then after you've got your uh, marksmanship training and then your qualification and all that good stuff, basically showing the military, showing the army that you are fully capable of being able to shoot a weapon and hit a target at up to, I think it's 300 meters or something like that. Uh, then you move along into your team tactics, uh, squad tactics, platoon tactics, and company movement type tactics. Uh, you move along in phases as such to basically one-on-one -on -one with a buddy, uh, learn how each other operates. Then you go to a squad. You learn how a squad operates. Then a platoon, which has four squads, operates like that. And then you've got a, uh, a company, which is, I don't know, depending on what kind of unit you're in, uh, usually four platoons uh, per company. So once you learn all that stuff, you get to graduate from basic training. You get to move on to your, uh, your job, your job training, your job that you selected when you sat down with your recruiter and you went to MEPS and uh, basically they was like, okay, this is what you want, this is open, got it, we'll sign you up. So now that we've got that little piece out of the way, uh, like I said, the reason that I joined, I joined because I needed to get away from where I was at in my life and what I was doing, who I was hanging out with, I needed to get away from all that stuff. Uh, and I'd always been the like, America, like I'd always been that kind of person. Uh, so I felt it was my civil duty to serve. My original intentions were to serve three and a half years, the initial contract, three and a half years, and I was gonna get out. And that was gonna be that. I was gonna go back to work in the hometown that I grew up in and things happen, things change. I ended up getting married, I've had two kids now. But uh, I just kept finding myself re-enlisting and re-enlisting, and here I am 11 years later, and uh, I wouldn't change any of it for the world uh, whatsoever. The Army has been very good to me. I've met tons and tons of people that, when I say I would shed blood for, I mean that wholeheartedly. I mean, these people are uh, just as close as family. They're, I mean, we would. It, it's insane the type of people that you, you meet in the military. Uh, no matter what branch. I've got friends like that in the Navy, in the Marines, in the Air Force, um, in the Army as well, obviously. But you meet some of the some of the coolest people you'll ever meet in your life, and and you'll always hold a bond, a some kind of bond that you won't get anywhere else, okay? That's like, for example, let's say I walk into a, a room with 10 people, and there's one other veteran there. You can kind of tell when somebody's a veteran. Like, they just carry themselves a certain way and you're automatically gonna have a, a connection with that person. Uh, so you can, like we like to say, shoot the shit with them a lot better than the other nine people in the room that don't have military service. That's just, that is what it is. You can ask any veteran you know about that. Uh, when they're around another veteran, you can kind of, you get that vibe and you can kind of tell and you're instantly gonna uh, have that connection with them. But that is why I joined uh, the military. That is also gonna wrap this video up. Guys, I have tons and tons and tons and tons of really, really cool, really awesome stories that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys. Uh, some are very emotional, some are very, I don't know, hilarious, uh, some are pretty graphic, so be on the lookout for that on the channel, these military videos, and, and help me think of a name for these military style videos, or should I just go with Military Monday? What do you guys think? Uh, if that's the case, then I'll I'll just make it that. It's no no issue with that. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the love and all the support. We'll catch you guys on the next one.